Hi, it's Dwyer. It's September the 8th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk Joe Joyce versus Daniel Dubois. I believe the casinos have this one wrong. The bet I like here is the underdog Joe Joyce to win at greater than three to one odds. You're getting a plus 334 right now, hedged with the under six and a half rounds. Let's complicate this. I'm gonna add Dubois in the seventh round at 11 to one, and I'll add Dubois in the eighth round at 12 to one, simply to get the extra rounds, the extra coverage. But understand the risk involved. If Dubois wins the fight in the ninth round or later, you lose it all. Now it's one of the big questions in sports it's a way I bet many fights. I'm a baseball guy. The question is, how can you convince Mariano Rivera to throw anything other than split-fingered fastballs? In other words, when a guy has something that works, when he's a Hall of Famer in a certain style, how do you convince him to do anything else, right? How do you convince fastball pitcher Nolan Ryan to develop a curveball, right? That's the question. So Daniel Dubois, in my opinion, is a fastball pitcher. You know what he's going to do, right? Fastball pitchers. And I'm being figurative here. Obviously, he's a boxer. Fastball pitchers have a pitch they rely upon. Right? They can't deviate from it. They don't need to completely understand their craft. They don't need to think along with the batter. Right? There's not a lot of guesswork. It's a style, it works. It's gotten Dubois an unbeaten record. It's gotten Dubois a lot of publicity in this fight against, let's be clear, an Olympic silver medalist who has fought the more meaningful opposition. Dubois has fought no one on par with Brian Jennings, a contender who fought Vladimir Klitschko, went the distance. Dubois has fought no one on par with Bermain Stavur, a former heavyweight champion, the guy who Deontay Wilder beat to win the title, right? A guy who beat Chris Ariola. Joe Joyce has dusted off both Jennings and Stavur. He not only is the more decorated amateur, he's fought the tougher competition in the pros. But Dubois looks so good on film. Front foot heavy, right? Throws hooks from odd angles, right? Has a body attack. Isn't that how he beat Snyder's in his last fight? All on his front foot, right? On his front foot in that style, where he's the aggressor. If it gets too hot, he just jumps back. Waits again, jumps back in. Right? All on his front foot. It's a defined style. It's like a fastball. He hasn't had to adjust to his opponent. He hasn't had to change his style. Now, when I see this against someone like Joyce, who might look physically slow, 
right? Joyce doesn't have fast hands. Joyce doesn't have fast feet. But when I see a Joyce, who, again, is a card player, he's thought out. He's the opposite of Dubois. This is a guy who can take a step back. This is a guy who can hide behind a jab. This is a guy reading you every moment of the fight. He's not trying to impose his style on you. He's actually making adjustments and he's figuring out the lay of the land. Not only that, he's fought heavy punchers. Understand, Romain Stavern might have problems. Punching power is not one of them. Joe Joyce stood there. It wasn't a Deontay Wilder first round KO. Joe Joyce stood there, neutralized Stavern's power, and then, of course, was able to get that fight stopped. Both guys in this fight hit hard, more importantly. Right? Understand, there's a reason why Mariano Rivera, as good as that split-fingered fastball was, was a relief pitcher. Right? The reason is, with fastball types, the more you see that fastball, the less effective it is. The more you see Daniel Dubois, the less effective he is. Now it's important that these men have sparked already. Joe Joyce, card player, has actually seen the angles. You're not going to have a situation where he's in the ring and he's astonished that Dubois is throwing hooks from up here, right from shoulder level. He already has seen Dubois. More importantly, some of the people around that sparring session feel that Joyce got the better of him. Understand the depth of Joyce, too. This sport has some superstar trainers. It's unusual to find a guy who has trained with Adam Booth, who is currently with Ishmael Salas, and who is also trained with Abe San um, Abel Sanchez. That's who Joyce is. In my favorites folder here, too, you're going to see Joyce's amateur fight against Alexander Usyk. Now, I privately consider Usyk to be one of the very best in the sport. And Joyce, of course, goes the distance with Usyk. It's a hybrid amateur fight. I believe it's five rounds. He goes the distance with Usyk, and you'll notice the confidence level, right? Joyce enters that fight, and Usyk, decorated amateur, right, gold medal winner at the Olympics. You'll notice that Joyce comes into the fight conceding nothing, fully believing that this was his moment. You'll notice, too, that Usyk, who, when he senses weakness, can literally live in the pocket, become front foot heavy. Usyk has the common sense after a couple rounds with Joyce to start moving away from him. Right? Usyk figured out that this guy hits hard, that this guy has the confidence, and that this guy makes adjustments. Well, let me say this. I made a mistake. Early in Joyce's career, I came online. I saw Joyce. I thought, this guy's too slow. There's no way he's going to be able to make the adjustments at the pro level. I made a video. I said, you know, Joe Joyce is too slow. When he fights elite level competition, he's going to fall apart. I sold him short. I've watched this guy improve in fight after fight. He's blown out some prospects who I consider to be very promising, right? I believe Joe Hanks will do a hell of a lot better against Daniel Dubois 
than he did against Joe Joyce. Right? And I'll just say this. Joyce has figured out the angles. Joyce has figured out how to hit fastballs. More importantly, Joyce has figured out how to pitch himself. Right? Curveballs, screwballs, and stuff like that. So I believe this is a fight where either guy can get the KO. But Dubois isn't going to age well as this fight goes along. Right? The thing with fastball pitchers, think Mike Tyson, is that once the world makes the adjustment, once the world figures out how to cope with the style, fastball pitchers fall apart because they have nothing else to rely upon. So Mike Tyson's prime is before he's 25 years old. Right? Just look at the record. He's an absolute terror in the latter part of the 1980s. By the time we get to the 1990s, not so much. Daniel Dubois, I believe this is a situation where he's looked explosive, but the people around him sense that this might be his ceiling. In other words, ride the pony for the entire five cent ride. Right? Folks have figured out, gee, this might be Dubois' moment. Right? If Dubois can beat Joyce, try to slip him into a championship fight. With this punching power, with this hand speed, right? He's the opposite of Joyce. Dubois has hand speed, has power. The highlights are hard to beat. Right? You're dealing with an era of big, clunky heavyweights. Some of them are not defensively blessed. I don't consider Anthony Joshua defensively blessed. Right? Dubois has sparred with Tyson Fury, as had Joe Joyce, by the way, extensively. Right? Dubois has sparred with, with Tyson Fury. Dubois has been in the ring with Anthony Joshua. I think the people around Dubois understand they have to throw this young man out there in big fights before people figure out how to deal with his fastball. Because I don't think he has other pitches. I'm expecting Joe Joyce, the greater than three to one underdog, to win this fight. Right? Dubois has a puncher's chance, has a chance at a stoppage, because that's what he does. But I get the feeling that as this fight lingers, right, as this fight progresses into the later rounds, Joyce's superior boxing ability will take over. Right? I saw Dubois against Richard Lardy. That's a fight I encourage people to watch. There's a moment in that fight where Lardy is fighting back a bit too much in the middle of the ring. Dubois could not control spacing. He could not control pacing. You didn't get the feeling he could just reach forward and clinch Lardy. You got the feeling he was in a strange land. An opponent actually fighting back at it. Right? He looked winded to me, and that fight didn't go that many rounds. Now, by contrast, a Joe Joyce knows fights are going to have good moments and bad moments. Right? If you come in with some different strategy that's not on film, Joyce will make the adjustments. Joyce understands that he has to win rounds where no one hits the canvas. Right? Just understand. 
There has to be something about Joe Joyce that has people like Adam Booth willing to answer the phone, Salas willing to answer the phone, willing to take him on as a client. So this line here is an outrage, right? I, <laughs> I don't get it because both guys are fighting out of the UK. The UK is a gambling hub. They're much farther along than the United States in terms of sports betting. And you mean to tell me that Joyce is viewed so lightly that he's a greater than three to one underdog against a still relatively untested Daniel Dubois. Look, I love Dubois. He's fun to watch. I remember the Tyson Ray. Tyson was one of the better heavyweight champs we've we've seen. I'm a Yankee fan. I love Mariano Rivera. Rivera did not make it. In fact, let's let's use stronger language. Rivera, first ballot Hall of Famer, one of the highest vote totals for a Hall of Fame candidacy. He gets in as a relief pitcher. Rivera could not make it as a starting pitcher for the New York Yankees. Right? First few innings, opposing teams were dazzled. After that, he started getting cuffed around. Right? You get to the 90s. Mike Tyson, who was dominant in the 80s because he represented a style change. Everyone was living behind a jab. Right, suddenly here's this shorter guy able to get inside throwing power shots. Suddenly you get to the 90s where you had a lot of accomplished boxers, right? Lewis, Riddick Bowe, people forget how great he was, Evander Holifield, and you noticed that guys with more diversified games, we'll call them starting pitchers, you notice they were able to make the adjustment. Holifield's even able to get inside on Mike Tyson. Right? You notice Tyson started having trouble in fights. You notice Tyson couldn't take a step back, just like Dubois can't take a step back. Live off his back foot and throw a stiff jab. You notice that just wasn't in the arsenal. Right? Tyson had to crash the pocket. Dubois has to crash the pocket. Dubois' defense is basically him being a great athlete and able to take a quick step back. I'm just telling you Joe Joyce has thought through his strategy a little bit more than that. He, ironically, has more tools in his tool shed than does Dubois. We don't notice it because on film, the tools that Dubois has look staggering. He's overwhelming, guys. Revisit his last fight. He comes in, not a lot of defense. You notice, too, Tyson had head movement, right? You had a hard time finding Tyson. Dubois, because he's fought lesser competition, hasn't even developed the head movement to hide himself defensively from sharp shooting opponents. Understand too, Joe Joyce unbeaten. The only difference between Joyce and Anthony Joshua as an amateur is that Joshua won that last Olympic match. He won the gold medal. Joyce won the silver medal. Understand too, there's an age gap here. Joyce is in his mid-30s. He's much older than Dubois. Now, trust me when I say this, every generation thinks they're new, thinks they're savvier, thinks, thinks that this time it's different. Right? Dubois might look at Joyce as an old man. This is the heavyweight division. Joyce was a late starter to begin with. I'm just telling you, remember Dwyer's rule of relativity. 
heavyweights age at a slower rate than everyone else. Right? Joe Joyce is still in his prime. He's still viable at heavyweight. I think he takes this fight. But even I'm not crazy enough to bet on this fight unhatched. Right? Take the under six and a half rounds. And if the odds at your casino allow, buy the seventh and eighth round for Dubois. So this way you can watch the fight, knowing that it's only if this fight somehow magically makes it into the ninth round that you're at risk, right? And it's only if Dubois in the ninth round has paced himself properly. And I don't think, I don't think he will, that you'll be at risk. Right? If I had one bet to make, I'd take the underdog, Joyce simply to win. Since I can hatch, I'm also going with the under six and a half rounds, plus I'm buying the seventh and eighth for Dubois. Understand, if Joyce closes the show before the midway point of the seventh round, right? That's the six and a half, six full rounds and half of the next. You win both sides of the play. And of course, one of those sides is going off at greater than three to one odds on Joyce simply to win. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I don't even think Dubois has the jab to keep Joyce off of him. I think this is a bad matchup. I think the heavyweight division has much more talent, much more talent than we consider. I think the public thinks there's a big three. Right? Fury, Wilder, Joshua. Right? That's, that's what the public thinks. In reality, there's Povetkin, there's Hunter, there's Usyk. After this fight, we might be saying, there's Joyce. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.